I, when Richmond kind of popped up on the screen, did y'all, how aware of y'all are just like, this isn't the same Richmond team that y'all faced earlier in the season? Exactly. And, uh, you know, when we played Richmond in early March, everything went our way. I mean, every ball bounced our way, and, uh, and, and we were very fortunate. Um, we know that uh, Richmond was also banged up in that game, going into, coming into the game. So when I'm watching film of Richmond, especially offensively, um, there's some guys who look like they've got a better bounce in their step, look faster than the first time we played, because they're healthier. And they're certainly playing really well and putting a lot of balls in the net. We talked before, just because of the in-state nature, there's not a lot of in-state teams, but how much more fire they kind of come into the matchup with. I mean, what, what are you all expecting on Saturday? Yeah, we're expecting a team that beat us a year ago to come in here with confidence, you know. And, uh, you know, Shimadi and his staff are excellent. And they're going to they're gonna get these guys ready and reminding them how they beat us a year ago. And so we're, uh, we got our hands full out for sure. Uh, we're excited to be home, That's you know, and, uh, and, and excited that Richmond is the draw because of the crowd they could bring. Could be a great atmosphere Saturday afternoon. Connor and Cole both talked about maybe having more appreciation for the NCAA tournament, just how hard it is. Because, I mean, early in their career, obviously, you win four games and you, they won a national championship. But <laughs> how, how much do you think this team overall after last season has more appreciation for it? Yeah, I, I, we try to remind them no matter what, never take the month of May for granted. You know, despite all the expectations and the preseason hype and being the number two seed, don't take this for granted. Every lift we get to do as a team right now in the month of May, every practice, this is a gift. Now we earned the gift, but but squeeze it and appreciate it. And I, and you're probably right. You know, having lost last year in the quarterfinals, uh, it's not just like you know magical pixie dust every year that we get to play four games. You got to earn every one of those extra games. And uh, you know, I, I like our I like our mindset right now. I really do. And what have you seen from news just as the season progressed? Obviously, ended with that Notre Dame game. Just you talked about defense taking a little bit longer. Does it help that he's kind of rounding into form now? Too? It really does. You know, Matt Matt Nunes is playing at a really high level. Um, he had the uh, you know, he, he had the best save percentage in the league this year. So once we got into league play, uh, there was nobody better in the net. He's just been really really strong. Once we've played better and better competition, and uh, we're really really excited about the way he's he's seeing the ball. Um, and again, the way he controls our clear and our ten man ride. Typical for us, our defense starts slow, and here we are. And again, it's probably because of the complexity of the schemes, which is my fault. But because we've seen the progression, and it's happening again this late April into May, I'm going to keep doing it this way. We're, we're going to look a little confused early in the year, but we're starting to find our you know, find our rhythm. And certainly, when to slide, what matchups do we trust, who do we have to slide for, how quickly do we slide. And, and being a bit multiple, not having always having the same slide package. And so it's just, we're really gelling on defense right now, which is great to see. And you finished the season on a high note, good win over Notre Dame. Yeah. How do you, with the two weeks off, which are important to recuperate and get guys healthy, but also how do you bottle that? What do you want to, do you want to change things? Do you just tweak it? Like, what's the vibe going into Yeah, that? what I learned from Bronco Mendenhall a couple years ago, we well documented, we had three weeks off, was just identify one or two things you want to get better at. Don't do every skill set and every drill more often to do it just because you feel like, well, we just got to keep getting better and better and better. Don't think that way. Think about one or two things you need to get better at. And for us, you know, we got to improve our clearing, and that's certainly been something. And and one phase of our slide package we need. So we just focused on that last week. And, um, and we played softball one day. We took every other day off. It's just like, don't overdo it is the message I learned from Brian. Um, because you had all year to prepare for these things. And so I like that we're, we're, we're loose, uh, we're not tired. I want to make sure that we have big energy coming into this thing. Plus the other part of it is UVA is in final exams. Yes. And we don't finish till this Friday. And that adds another stressor, lack of less sleep than normal. Um, and so being home is so critical for our fans. But also we don't have to have proctors like we did last year at Providence College. You know, uh, and doing their final exams on the road. It's um, yeah, we're, we're such a blessing to earn this uh, whole game. Anyone surprised at all? Was there anyone that was like, oh. Joey Terenzi. Joey Terenzi, who's registering this year. Um, I didn't realize he was left-handed. He plays lacrosse right-handed, <laughs> but he's, he throws baseball and he plays left-handed. Uh, most of these objects are the opposite. Righties who play lacrosse or hockey, left-handed, not the vice versa. And. Uh, but he was firing balls to the plate. You know, he, he's got a gun. And he, he actually knows what he's doing. Yeah. And uh, it looked like Joey DiMaggio, uh, Joey Terenzi. He he was phenomenal. So. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the ball? Yeah. How does the goalie find that during the course?
course of a season? Like, just start seeing, is there anything you can do to help them? Yeah, or? right. Like, it's, you know, there's tracking the ball well, you know, but that seems mechanical as opposed to just moving with it and seeing it and just this all over it. I always give credit to Kip Turner. Kip Turner is an incredible goalie coach. And he's really patient, too. I'm the guy who's like, okay, make the save. You know, Kip just, okay, okay, what do we do there? He analyzes, sees some footwork, sees stuff, maybe a dip or something with a hand. Um, but yeah, I know, is Matt is playing his best lacrosse right now. And there, is there a secret formula there? I don't know. But he's really, he's really confident. He's seeing the ball, the ball in, he's like, no, just what you want to do. And he is, what he's done, you know, in this last six, seven games, he's done. Defensive Player of the Year, and, and you play well uh, against you know you know the, the best goalie in, in the league. I, I think that also helps your confidence. It's kind of you thought there was anybody on this team this year that could maybe have a similar capacity. You mentioned Noons, you mentioned Rippin shots. You think Rippin is a guy that oh, could really put on lock something in the NCAA tournament that could be spotlight and be something that could be shot? I mean, I think about it, he did score a couple goals in it. Coordinators against us have a dilemma. Who do you pull? You know, when Thomas McConaughey might go first you know, overall tonight, as he's already gone first in the NLL draft. You know, you, you feel like you got to put a poll on him. And, um, and then you have Jeff Connor, who's so good in a two-man game with, with Connor Schellenberger. So you might, probably will think about pulling him. Shots, hey, you get the short stick. You got to initiate. You got to finish. You got to score. And um, but I think he is poised to bring it. A couple of years ago, Xander was in the transfer portal for yeah. a bit there. What do you remember about that time and just kind of talking with him through that? Yeah, those are some dark days. You know, uh, Xander, Peyton Cormier, Mikey Harmeyer. Obviously, now we've got a, another man in the transfer portal. And and I just talked to the team about it. Like, hey, it's, we've set a tone. It's okay to jump in there, you know, and see if the grass is green on your other side, kick some tires. And that's okay. And, and you can come back. Um, and it's worked out great. Dude. That, you know, Xander did look at some other places. And, um, and, and you've, is there a better op, is there an opportunity to play faster? That, that, it's, they, 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 guys want to play, and, and you run that risk when you commit to the University of Virginia, right? You're gonna it takes your time. Connor Schellenberg is one of the few guys where we got to play right away. You know, Cade Sostek got to play right away. But most guys, you know, earn your time. And fortunately, um, Xander decided that okay, let me give it a little bit more time here, and, and boy, has it really paid off for us. In the past couple of years, you've worked him in there in the midi a little bit, and just trying to get him on the field. What have you seen kind of from those opportunities, how he's kind of maybe rolling that momentum into this year? Yeah, I, I, and I didn't know Xander's playing better than he has. He's continued to get better. But it's not like he came out of nowhere. He's been doing this in practice. He just was stuck behind Matt Moore, Ian Laviano, you know, some exceptional lacrosse players. And inevitably, after a game or a scrimmage, the other coach would be like, who's number 10? That, that guy is really tough. He's, and I'd be like, don't you want to talk about Schellenberger or Matt Moore or Peyton Cormier? No, no this is Andrew Dixon. He's, boy, he moves really well. I'm like, yeah, we should probably play him more, shouldn't we? You know, and, uh, and now we finally got him. And uh, I wish we had another year of him. Unfortunately, he's done. His eligibility is through. He's, he's, he's an exceptionally intelligent and crafty player. And, uh, boy, he snaps that ball off. And he can do that low to high shot, low to low. He keeps goalies guessing. I was say he's he's one away from setting a record that I'm not sure many people thought would get broken with Doug Knight's right. career. I mean, like we've seen some really good players come through here that got close, but you know, next goal would next goal wins it essentially. What has does he have the time to appreciate that? You know, I mean, like how's that? <laughs> I know, I don't know. And it's, on the one hand, you're like, how do you break that record when you have so many other talented goal scorers around you? Um, but on the other hand, you say, well, you got Connor Schellenberger feeding you, and you got Pete LaSalle winning face offs. So I'd like to be trying to break a record with that, that crowd around me. So, yeah, it's, it just is. Um, it is surprising how many goals he has when you always expect a big Canadian Cormier to have 50 goals. I 
he almost dies. I mean, if he right. wasn't hurt for a couple, he might be right That's there. true. He's missed a couple games. Yeah. You're right. Getting back to Richmond just for a second, uh, you mentioned their whole offense. They've been putting up some pretty serious numbers ever since you know the midway point of the season. What are you seeing from them on tape that they're doing really well just in the last month or so? Yeah, it's um, when we played them earlier in the year. Their offense, there, there was, they weren't flowing as well. They weren't clicking, and um, and you could see in the scores that they, 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 they were they were winning games, but like ten to seven, ten to eight. Now look at the scores. Now they're getting that twenty mark, and I do see Dalton Young and Lance Madonna who are really talented, they, they just look faster. They look healthier than they had been. And um, and I'm seeing a couple of new middies in the mix. So some guys have played a high level and replaced some people who were ahead of them. And so there's, I think Dan Shamadi and his crew have found the right formula as they've gotten later in the year here. Uh, what they're doing on Man Up, what they're doing on 66. Yeah, it's a, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it, it looks more like the team that we played last year than the team we played in March.